the enemy wants to make it physical because politically, we have a very unpopular dictator, a globalist frontman, who's now revealing himself in their desperateness to force the agenda and to cause physical resistance so they can have a massive crackdown. I'm going to be honest with folks, if it goes physical... I don't even know if I want to say what I think is going to happen. What I know is going to happen. Because I'm not saying that's a good thing. I am not for a military coup in this country. But George Soros, Obama, and the rest of them, Michael Moore, Hillary Clinton, all of you, you guys have gone too far. Everybody who has a brain knows you are trash. And I would really advise you to back off right now. Everybody knows we don't play games. We don't bluff here. And I just know the sense of this country and this world and the climate. And you may be insulated up there on the Potomac like King George was in 1775. But we're never going to submit to you. We're never going to roll over to you. And we've just begun to fight. We've just begun to wake up the sleeping giant. And we're never going to surrender. And as the medical tyranny gets worse and worse, and as people realize they submitted to the system and all it gave them was death, there's not going to be anywhere safe for you people on the planet. And I know you don't care because it's your lust to hurt us your lust to break us, your spirit's will won't let you give up your attempt to hurt the innocents. I know. But I'm talking to your enforcers, many of which came from good families, many of which are honorable individuals who've been brought into evil incrementally until they woke up one day and didn't know who they were anymore. The fact that you don't know who you are, the fact that you still are scared, shows you've still got a soul left. And it's never too late until you've totally given yourself over to evil. It's never too late when you still have that whisper of conscience to turn back. So many of you have joined this system because you're scared or you want to belong, or you got into it, and now you don't know where you are. The danger is in going along with this. The danger is submitting to globalism. Globalism is eugenics. It's scientific tyranny, technocracy, in their words. The public Bilderberg meeting, Davos, the last two years running, they say, we are dictatorial, we are technocratic. Remember that article and now for world government five years ago, six years ago in the Financial Times of London, where the editor, foreign editor says, yes, we're authoritarians and we are going to take your freedoms because we know best. Then you look at what they're trying to set up and it's a nightmare. Joining us about 20 minutes into the next hour is one of the other leading questioners of official thought and that is David Icke from the UK he'll be joining us here in about three four minutes from now that we have him now uh, as a lot of TV viewers can see right there uh, we are also simulcasting the radio show as we've done in the last 16 17 years uh, at infowars.com forward slash show I know it gets confusing for some people out there because they hear me talking about put this on screen put that on screen uh, I would go out and shoot video of UN signs at parks, show the treaty, saying it means they own and control the property around it. Uh, UNESCO, people would say I was a liar. So I said, well, we'll just start making the radio show a TV show uh, as well so we could physically show people things. And that's one of the things that we pioneered and we're proud of. Folks, uh, we set up David Icke about a month ago on the show because he's been very busy and because he's being persecuted 
Uh, they've tried to keep him from traveling to Canada. They've tried to keep him from traveling to Australia to give a speech to thousands of people. And he's a guy that's filled stadiums with upwards of 20,000 people I know, uh, if memory serves, and whose books have been read by tens of millions, videos seen by hundreds of millions. And you notice they want to ban Donald Trump from traveling to the UK now. The government's looking at it. They want to uh, say if the IRS claims they're going to investigate you. No judge, no jury. You just can't fly in America. Obama says he wants to apply that same legalese because he's a constitutional lawyer. What a joke uh, to gun owners. Just, just, you're not a criminal. They won't tell you why. You're just put on a list. This is the essence of 1984, Kafka-esque, the, the essence of the Soviet Union or Nazi Germany. But he's a constitutional lawyer, so the press all laughs and giggles and smiles at him because I'm going to play these clips right now. It all ties into the classical tyranny we're witnessing, regardless of what you think about guns. The president's protected by guns and taxpayer money. Michael Moore's got bodyguards. They're funding ISIS with weapons to carry out all these crimes and then crying about the few hundred people that die a year in mass shootings, statistically very low. But notice Obama said on April 5th, 2013, I'm constrained by the system our founders put in place. I'd like to be able to restrict this, but I can't. Well, he said yesterday, and we're going to play this clip, we can't wait for Congress to get in line with me on gun control, in line with me. Can't get them to restrict guns in Congress. FBI admits crime rates down upwards of 60-something percent since 1992. I kept saying 51. Professor Locke came on and said, no, it's really about 61. But regardless, even the LA Times admit gun crime way down as gun ownership goes up because the criminals are afraid. The places that are super dangerous are New York, D.C., Chicago, where there are no legitimate gun owners. And then the criminals just run crazy. Regardless, we are a violent, barbaric society, but they want to be the only ones with the monopoly of power, as the UN said. So this ties into what David Ike's been talking about, where he's never said one racist thing about anybody. He's what I'd call a classical liberal, the former head of the Green Party, been given awards by major African tribes in Africa, you name it, and they're now taking people off international satellite because they, quote, said something bad about Israel. I have articles today. People say, well, good, that's anti-Semitic. No, then you take everybody's free speech away. Don't you see, folks, they're going after all of our rights. Illegal spying, saying we don't have medical rights. It's happening. I want to play these clips that go to David Icke because it sets the table for everything that's happening. Obama, let's go back to April of 2013 when he said this. He's not a dictator. Here it is. You hear some of these quotes. I need a gun to protect myself from the government. We can't do background checks because the government's going to come take my guns away. Well, the government's us. Oh, really? The, 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 the foreign insurance companies that wrote Obamacare? You. They are elected by you. I am elected by you. I'm constrained as they are constrained by a system that our founders put in place. This is a government of and by and for the people. And, and, and so surely we can have a debate that's not based on the notion somehow that your elected representatives uh, are trying to do something to you other than potentially prevent another group of families from grieving the way the families of Aurora or Newtown or Columbine have grieved. All right, so he's constrained by the system our founders put in place. He's not a dictator. Fast forward two years, and he says, we can't wait for Congress to get in line with me on gun control. So he's admitting he's violating the system. He's violating the law. Here it is. Now, I want to be clear. Congress still needs to act. The folks in this room will not rest until Congress does. You just don't want to act as a dictator alone. You want them to certify it. But if they won't, you'll just be naked and do it. Because once Congress gets on board with common sense gun safety measures, 
We can reduce gun violence a whole lot more. Like you did in Chicago, man, at the worst in the world. Or but we also can't wait. Oh, you can't wait. Oh, okay. Until we have a Congress that's in line with the majority of Americans. Oh! There are actions within my legal authority that we can take to help reduce gun violence and save more lives. Actions that protect our rights and our kids. After Sandy Hook, Joe and I worked together with our teams and we put forward a whole series of executive actions to try to tighten up the existing rules and systems that we had in place. Okay, and there are some executive actions you could argue they could do, but these are national registration, not letting you transfer weapons, making a biometrics on them and micro stamping that bankrupts everything and doesn't work, uh, and saying we can just put you on a mental health list or a no-fly list and then a no-gun buy list, just like David Icke. Oh, David, you can't fly to Canada. You can't fly to Australia because you write books about a world government coming. But now the Pope announces world government. Now they openly announce they want war with Russia. Everything David Icke's basically been writing about is now unfolding. So they've got a problem, David. I guess now they just need to shut us up. You've been doing this 20 plus years. I've been doing it 20 years. You longer than I. I mean, wow. Uh, it is really happening. Uh, you said 2016 would be all hell break loose. You wrote that 10 years ago. But you said that would be the beginning of the end of their system. Uh, do you still stand by that? Because, I mean, I certainly hope you're right. It's the beginning of the end. You've been proven right in your predictions. I just hope your latter predictions are right as well, David Ike. It's inactive. It is the first supplement that supplies immediate anti-stress nutrients for instant brain-boosting support. It is a cutting-edge, unique brain-supporting supplement delivering powerful nutrients in an immediate and extended bilayer tablet. In order for the brain and neural system to function optimally, there are immediate and continuing demands that need to be satisfied. Synaptive delivers vitamins and minerals essential for brain and nervous system health. But this product was formulated specifically to support and promote uh, healthy brain function, provide scientifically measurable uh, neuronal stress combating activity supports mental focus by promoting reduced anxiety levels, promotes optimal signal strength of neurotransmitters in the brain, supports enhanced cognitive activity, supports healthy memory and cognitive function, delivers vitamins and minerals essential for your brain and nervous system uh, health, includes organic whole foods, synergizing cofactors for optimal activity, and that is synaptive. Revitalize your body and your mind from the inside on a cellular level. Synaptive supports enhanced cognitive activity essential nutrients known for their brain and nervous system support and protection. Deliver nutrients to your body that will help you live a long, healthy life. Feel the benefits of instant brain boosting support. Our antioxidant blend helps keep you stimulated mentally and the powerful immediate and extended release delivery of nutrients will keep you focused. Advanced brain support and neural protection to give you an advantage in an increasingly demanding world. Activate your neurons. Activate your mind. Combat stress effectively with synaptive bilayer release tablets. Now you can support Alex Jones and InfoWars and support you and your family's health, vitality, and well-being at the same time. Shop AntiAgingUltra.com for all your natural nutritional needs. Well, you, Alex, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm not feeling too good because I'm suffering from uh, oppositional defiant disorder. Apparently it's catching. And um, we um, are facing, I would suggest, uh, three years that will decide which way this goes. I think 2016, 2017, and 2018 are going to be pivotal years in uh, deciding where this world goes. Because if we allow um, the system to go on, the agenda to go on um, unchecked, then by the end of 2018, 2019, we're going to be looking at something that's going to be very difficult to turn around. Um, but if we start to awaken, and the great news, Alex, is that in greater and greater numbers, people are beginning to reassess the world and reassess um, themselves and reassess life. And what's giving me tremendous um, encouragement is where these um, people are coming from. They're coming from within the system now. 
I, I, that's my ex personal experience anyway. They're, they're people who would never have questioned anything before, and then suddenly they're looking at it, and concepts that would have been totally alien to them a very short time ago are now starting to make sense. And, you know, I said many years ago, there's going to come a time when this agenda is going to have to break the surface. For uh, People would not believe how long this has been going on. This is not a modern thing. This has been going on generation after generation after generation as the ground has been prepared for this uh, global fascist Orwellian state. And in that period, it's been able to stay under the radar. It's been able to manipulate in the shadows. It's uh, been able to get things ready to be played out in the public arena. Um, but of course, if you are going to actually make your world uh, happen, then at some point you have got to start playing those things out from the shadows into the public arena where we can see them. And that's where we are now. Now, that shows that the agenda has moved on, but it's a, there's another aspect to this. This is a very, very dangerous time for the agenda and those behind it because they can't hide anymore. It's in your face and, and, and it's impacting on people's lives. And, and what we need to do in this um, alternative independent uh, arena is to redouble and redouble our efforts to present to the widest possible audience another narrative, another explanation of world events, which challenge the, the random um, presentation of its all random events and show how it all fits together. Show how 9-11 and what's happening in Syria uh, uh, gun control laws and mass immigration out of the Middle East into Europe is all connected. They're all dominoes in the same line. And when uh, people um, take the trouble to um, read or listen to this narrative, as I know from personal experience, it makes far more sense of the world than that it's all um, a random accident and. Uh, the, um, and David, it goes further is, than that is, now. It's happening uh, by chance. It goes further, as you know. Brzezinski writes books. Kissinger writes books. Uh, the White House Science Czar writes books. The head of the Kissinger Group writes books. They write books and admit, okay, there are too many of you. Okay, we are putting stuff in the water. Okay, we are going to merge with machines and become gods. Uh, you know, okay, we are trying to create black holes and play God at CERN. I mean, what's crazy is... They've gone from denying it, where I've had the host of you know ABC News here and Nightline, and I show him six or seven clips of world leaders calling for world government just five years ago, and he looks at me and he goes, that's a different world government than the one you're talking about, to now they go, yes, world government's here, it's run by private banks, but still you're a kook and you're bad, and you need to be arrested. I mean, it's so bizarre to see how many people are awakening, including world leaders and people, and very prominent folks, and people in the system, as you said, that's what I'm seeing. In the system of all places, but then the general public large swaths like get off on it and, and want to join with it, even though it hurts them. It's like they're nihilistic and are in a trance, like lemmings running off a cliff. It's quite a paradox. Well, um, you know, I've just got a, a new book that's just come out. It's called Phantom Self. And the subtitle is and How to Find the Real One. And what I um, show there is the scale of programming, perception programming, that starts when you leave the womb. So by the time you get into the adult world, if you have not um, opened your mind to see beyond the norms you've been programmed to accept is reality, then the only fix, the only... Um, way that you can um, understand the world is on the basis of the perception programming that you've, well, it's literally downloaded. Um, and so if you, uh, you come out of the womb, you are then influenced by parents, not parents overwhelmingly that um, uh, do it from a, a, a malevolent point of view, 
they have been programmed by going through the same system I'm just going to quickly describe, and thus they have taken on these perceptions of reality. And they then pass them on to the, the, the young child. And now, of course, um, at an earlier and earlier age, the state is getting control of children from, from the early and earlier ages. I mean, we've got a guy in, in the education establishment in Britain who a year or so ago called for children to start school at two. So immediately you come out of the womb, you have a short time, um, overwhelming with parents that are passing on the program because that's what they've taken on, and then you hit the system. Suddenly, as a small child, you are sitting um, in a chair in a classroom, and an authority figure is telling you what's right, what's wrong, what's real, what's not real, when you can go to the toilet, when you have to be there, when you can go home. Schools, I mean, it's like I say, take a deep breath, take a step back, look at it again. Schools are prisons for children, but they're worse than that. They are programming centers and prisons for children. And if you go further back and look at it, at least before, you might have different teachers, different ideas in school. But the new systems are dumbing them down. Physically, yeah. the IQ is going down, not just the education. They're openly scrambling the education, two plus two equals five, to literally fry their brains. And it's not even different teachers now. It's globally UNESCO-approved UN curricula under treaty worldwide in over 90% of the schools on the planet literally teaching them how to be mental midget conformist morons who were never conscious and will accept whatever the new contradictory download is. Exactly. Well, Bill Gates is involved in that in America, and anything Bill Gates is in is the agenda. Um, you look at uh, everything that he's involved in. <laughs> it's, it's like a wish list for the agenda that he's funding through his, uh, his, his foundation with his missus. Um, and, 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 but this education foundation of the program is so vital because... Um, you go on to college and you go on to university, or many people do, and then from that base programming, this is the world, this is reality, this is how it is. And I, I've debated, uh, Alex, many times at Oxford University, and um, uh, this, th this is the elite university in Britain, and um, I've not been asked a challenging question. The, the, the level of programming is extraordinary. And then what happens? From that base programming, people go out to be doctors, they go out to be scientists, they go out to be politicians, they go out to be journalists. And from that base programming, they're all coming, unless they become in any way conscious beyond uh, the program, they are viewing the world the same way. So um, uh, where do the mainstream media go to get a fix on reality when they actually bother to question it at all? They go to scientists. So what the system scientists? They go to the system's doctors when they want to talk about health. And anyone who's outside of that, uh, that, that program sense of everything, medicine, science, politics, economics, um, they are by definition a kook because they are outside the norm. This is how it works. Um, and it's, it, it's extraordinary, the level of programming. Uh, and I, I would say this, I've said it, said it before in the books, you know, I think there's a very good chance uh, uh, that the, the level of programming is such, the level of perception program is such, that vast numbers of people, possibly the vast majority, go through an entire lifetime without an original thought or emotional response that hasn't come from the program. And if people just um, ask themselves the question, what do I believe, and then ask the next question, why do I believe it, where has it come from, and it will inv it invariably have come from some aspect or some expression of the system. And, and like the Nazis said, you know, give me the child to the age of seven and I'll show you the man. Well, they have control of young people now well beyond the age of seven. And as you rightly say, what we're seeing is because, you know, I'm, I'm coming up 64. So I was born in 1952. I remember the education system as it was in the 50s. Um, and I've seen it change. This is why um, our generations are so pivotal in what's happening, because we have a, uh, a point of reference before this got really, really extreme. And thus, we can see how extreme it is. 
And what's happening with the education system is it's, and again, because of what I said earlier. Oh, you can see where it's going. Oh, you can't have be a cowboy or, or a native at, at Halloween. Let's just ban Halloween altogether or ban paper bags. They're hateful uh, or ban the name boy or girl. Uh, or ban Lynch Hall because it's scary. And we all look at that and say, that's crazy. It's not. They're getting rid of all the words, just yeah. like George Arwell warned, was yeah, the speak. was the plan to where we can't even communicate with these people. And they're going to grow up in a system where they have no bearing or no idea or even no, any sense. I mean, they could tell young people that women never had babies, say vaginally, and I think they would believe that cesarean section was the way babies were born, or that women never breastfed. I mean, in the world they're bringing in, they're basically looking at women like they're crazy now if they don't want to have a cesarean up front, or if they want to breastfeed, they act like it's weird. I mean, everything normal, everything natural is supposedly evil because you're right, we're all in a giant prison. We're being forced into the physical matrix with the virtual reality helmets we're going to put on, and the Pentagon admits that's the plan. So why would insiders, David, who know where this really leads, want to be for this? Because they're promised they're going to be part of the power structure in the future? Well, um, there's a few things I'd like to say about what you just said. I think it's, um, there's, there's some points there to, to, to go with. But in terms of the, what you've just asked, um, there, there is a, uh, a major incentive for such people in the sense of being frightened not to go with it. You know, if, you, if you've seen consequences for others of not going with something, then if, you, if, if your um, backbone is not made of steel, then um, you will go with something uh, that merely out of self-preservation. And then there's the uh, other incentive that if you go with it, there are rewards for that. And tell you what, you stay there, David. David Icke, David Icke.com is our guest, iconic author, researcher, outside the box, uh, kingpin. We're going to come back and talk about what he just started mentioning. You know, China, they're bringing the system here where you have a social score for going along with the system or you can't buy or sell. It's called the mark of the beast. You might have heard of it. Welcome back. Alex Jones here broadcasting worldwide. David Icke is our guest with us 20 minutes to the next hour. Former U.S. attorney Clinton could face criminal indictment. We're going to cover that after David Icke leaves us. North Korea claims to have fully successfully miniaturized a hydrogen bomb and tested it. They've been proven to be liars before. Pentagon avoids the word combat after another American soldier dies in Afghanistan. Study Obama has issued more restrictive executive orders in the past six administrations combined. He's been a bigger enemy of the press. Studies show that any other president. Trump says he will not let Obama screw with the Second Amendment. That's some of what's coming up. About to go back to David Icke and get into the point that uh, he was making. And then it ties together with the future. They just say if you criticize government, criticize corporations, don't play ball. Uh, you just can't get on an airplane. You can't travel. You can't live. You don't get good credit. Your behavior now will affect your social and physical credit. This is the model that actually was developed here but deployed and tested in China that David Icke was starting to get into. We'll talk to him in a moment. But the good news is never lower approval ratings for government. Never more resistance to the system. You know, they push abortion. Abortion's unpopular now all over the world. Was popular just 30, 40 years ago is the new trendy thing. Uh, gun control was more popular than not 30, 40 years ago. Now it's very unpopular. Uh, the polls show it. So the good news is there is an awakening of a large group of people of every race, color, and creed happening. I mean, you know, we've got Matt Drudge listening pretty much every day. I mean, he told me he listens every day. I'm flattered. Uh, we've got, I know for a fact, a lot of the Russian high command government people, Vladimir Putin, reportedly listens and likes the show. I was told this years ago. Uh, you shouldn't be so critical of Putin about, you know, this and that. You know, he likes your show. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, right, till I heard it from a bunch of high-level Russians. And now you see the type of media they have in Russia talking about vaccines will kill you, you know, cancer's way up because of glyphosate, we're banning GMO, it's a, it, a global warming, a global government carbon tax to destroy nation states and kill billions. I mean, it's not just that, that you know, they're Alex Jones listeners. They are tuning into the reality. It makes sense to them, and then they learn more. And then they basically get outside the box. It's very exciting. Don't take it for granted that you're able to hear this. But what if we could slow cellular aging? An amazing breakthrough in genetic coding may finally make it possible to do just that. 
In 2009, a team of doctors won the Nobel Prize in Physiology for discovering that the ends of chromosomes are protected by coverings called telomeres that control cellular aging. Since this breakthrough, hundreds of studies have investigated telomeres in search of the fountain of youth. Some of these studies suggest telomeres may even be reprogrammed to promote cell regeneration. From this cutting-edge research, Immortalium was born, an advanced nutritional formula designed to nourish, optimize, and protect our telomeres. So how does it work? Thanks to genetic coding, cells can replicate, enabling tissue repair and renewal. During replication, DNA splits, taking genetic code from telomeres to create a healthy new cell. When we're young, our telomeres are long and strong, with plenty of genetic code to spare. We enjoy healthy cell division and efficient tissue regeneration. But each time cells divide, telomeres break off another piece of genetic code. As we age, our telomeres get shorter and shorter. As telomeres shorten, cells deteriorate. After a limited number of cell divisions, telomeres run out of genetic code. A kill switch flips to the off position, and the cell dies. But here's the good news. New research suggests that by reprogramming our telomeres to stay long and strong, we may keep the switch on, prolonging cell division so our cells can keep regenerating our tissues. With long telomeres, you may get more life out of your cells. An advanced, never-before-seen formulation Immortalium nourishes your telomeres with 35 compounds and antioxidant enzymes in precise ratios. These nutrients may combine to optimize the long, strong telomeres that are associated with wellness. As Immortalium nourishes your telomeres, it may also optimize cellular division for better regeneration across your body's 100 trillion cells. Just imagine how all of these revitalized peak-performing cells might support your health. Immortalium maximizes its telomere supportive cellular activity with extended-release bilayer delivery and protective cobalt blue glass bottles. Telomere science may eventually unlock immortality, but why wait? With Immortalium, you can start addressing your telomere health today so your cells can live longer. Now you can support Alex Jones and InfoWars and support you and your family's health, vitality, and well-being at the same time. Shop AntiAgingUltra.com for all your natural nutritional needs. Don't take it for granted. They are pushing worldwide to censor. They are coming in with these systems David Icke talked about. He's getting blocked all over the world traveling when there isn't one racist thing ever said. But let's say he said racist stuff. He should be able to travel. You know, again, I'm not against Muslims in general. I don't get into this, but... The clash of civilizations is happening to the point Louis Farrakhan, the tape's coming out, we're going to put it out very soon, interviewed him two days ago, said we have to block people coming in from the Middle East because we know they're bringing terrorists in on purpose to bring in martial law. I mean, that's a fact. They took over Syria. They brought in the terrorists. And then now they're going to bring them here to demonize everybody and take everybody's freedoms. I mean, it's a really sophisticated problem and reaction solution situation. Uh, but but David, it's here. Like you said, the shoe is dropping. You've got the floor. Please continue with your point you were getting into, how they are going to try to demonize folks, how they're going to reward others that play ball. Uh, but again, it's an evil spider, a monster, as you've said, at the center of the web. You can't make a deal with this, can you, David Icke? Well, no. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it's simple um, what is happening. You are seeking to bring in a centralized global fascist, communist, whatever you like, the, to people living in those um, situations, they're the same, really, um, Orwellian global state in which uh, you have 24-7 surveillance and um, your freedoms are basically zero. Now, to bring that in, you can't just come out and say, OK, we've had a meeting. This is what we're going to do. You have to create in the public mind the reasons why you're doing it. And because those reasons are not genuine, you have to make them up. In other words, you are bringing in your global fascist system by lying and lying and lying. Now, that's one side of it. But of course, what lies are very are vulnerable to, to say the least, is the truth. So you've got um, a double whammy. You've got two fronts. One is to um, lie to the public so that you have your excuses to bring in your uh, global system. 
And two, you've got to shut up those that are speaking the truth and thus exposing the lie. And that's what we're seeing. That's why, I mean, and, and this, is a, this is an important point. Where does the real power lie? It lies with the truth. It doesn't lie with the lies. Uh, you can see behind me how big this room is. This is my little office where I do all my work and have done so for 10, 12 years, turning out the books and all the rest of it. Um, and I'm currently sitting 13,000 miles away from the Australian government. One bloke. And yet they are seeking to delay and delay a speaking visa where I'm supposed to speak in uh, a number of uh, Australian cities in July because they fear the information that I'm going to circulate. Um, and Australia, I mean, there was a, a, an Australian politician uh, said in Parliament, or a video I saw this week, he is saying Australia is in a pre-police state um, situation. I would, I would take the pre away if you look at what's happening in Australia with um, a situation. Um, it's another take a, take a breath, uh, take a step back, look at it again, in which um, people are being denied benefits from the government if they don't have their children vaccinated according to the government's vaccination schedule. Now, if anyone wants a definition of a tyranny, then, uh, then you know, give me one better than that. Uh, but what they don't want, because that's the lie, that's bringing in the, uh, the system, they don't want the truth to challenge the lie. And the fact that they are frightened of me coming into the, their country and, and, and just talking at about three, four events, um, when, uh, when um, you know, I'm just one bloke, just shows the power of information. And I'm looking at that um, headline now. This is a, a point that um, I, I want to pick up from what you were talking about earlier. The number of people at the center of this global web who are doing this in full knowledge and awareness of what they're doing is very, very small. Um, and they have to um, manipulate other people to play out their um, desires, their agenda, called government administrators and politicians and others. They have to manipulate people in uniform to impose their agenda once the laws have been passed by others. Um, and they um, have to um, keep people in the dark of what is actually going on. And to do that, given there's 7 billion people in the world, you have to enlist through manipulation and programming large numbers of those people to police each other. An analogy I used many years ago is that people laugh at sheep um, because they uh, you know, run from the sheepdog and, and, and follow the one in front. But humanity in large numbers has out -sheep the sheep. At least the sheep need a sheepdog to keep them in line. Humans keep each other in line. And, of course, that is the whole foundation of what's called political correctness, which is the insane seeking to silence the intelligence. Absolutely. In the intelligent, and, in my view. And they're but, moving well, on every well, front. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And it's getting more and more extreme. When I read what's happening in United States universities, it's extraordinary. But what they're doing is recruiting the slaves to enslave the slaves. And this is what political correctness is. You start out here and you have debate. You have different views. You have people having access to different views and different information and, and having the right, oh, my goodness me, they'll call the police, um, to make a decision on that information. And then political correctness is squeezing it and squeezing it in, in league with other situations until what's left is only the official version of everything, which That's is right. the lie. And what's, what's amazing is that people who would otherwise say, oh, yeah, freedom of speech, when someone says something they don't like, instead of saying, well, actually, I think that's wrong because the response is always ban them, ban them, silence them. And, and anyone who says that, and there's many on the left who say that, of course, all the time, don't tell me you are uh, in favor of a free society. Don't tell me you believe in freedom. 
because you are a key part of the tyranny. Without people like you, the few in the uh, in the background who are running the tyranny couldn't play the tyranny out. Wake up before you, in the end, become a victim of the tyranny. And so do your children and grandchildren. Well, David, that's absolutely right. And, and, and again, places like MSNBC and Salon now openly say, arrest Alex Jones, shut him up. Uh, they, they go, it's great that the IRS is harassing the Tea Party and Christian groups and veterans groups and auditing them, they're evil racists. They deserve to be shut down. A, they're not racist, but even if they were, they're on TV saying, let's persecute people when they would have crucified Richard Nixon for doing one one thousandth of it. They're so totalitarian, but they call themselves liberal. And that's what I'm saying. We saw great tyranny move forward under the Republicans and Bush, but now under Obama, even liberal constitutional lawyers like Jonathan Turley say it's about triple what Bush did because he can get away with so much more. And again, we knew there was a clash of civilizations. You spoke about PNAC day one. I spoke about it even before 9-11. The clash of civilizations. But it doesn't mean it isn't real once they start it. And they're bringing in radical Wahhabist Sunnis backed by Saudi Arabia, who they allow to colonize the Middle East and Africa. They're now colonizing here. And we're told by the left now, in fact, a German mayor in the Green Party, after 35 women were raped in public, it translates in German to they shouldn't dress like that, and it's their fault they got raped. Uh, and this is a big feminist liberal. So now feminists say Western men, where women were empowered, the best place in the world historically for women, that's bad, but radical Islam Sexual mutilation, Wahhabist cult garbage is allied with sickening weird feminists who are now basically saying women of Germany are like hors d'oeuvres on the table for all these uh, military age men pouring in with fake passports. They're letting planes come into the U.S. No one is checked. That's, that's CBS News, New York Daily News. I mean, even leftist publications. Are, are, are reporting that they don't even check the ID, but when I fly back into the U.S., they pull me in a room and interrogate me and tear through everything I've got for political reasons. I mean, it's so clear. Well, uh, I, I, it might be a good point to get into this whole situation with migration into Europe and also get back to this uh, section that I'm presenting of the program. Um, you see, people's beliefs in a world of programming are usually programs. Um, many years ago now, back in the 1990s, I was in the old city of Jerusalem next to the big mosque. And I was watching some Muslim kids play football. And the old city of Jerusalem is a very small area, but it's broken up into four quarters. There's a Christian quarter, a Muslim quarter, a Jewish quarter, and an Armenian quarter. And um, I was looking around at these different people, and it occurred to me, the truth, that each of them in this small area called the old city of Jerusalem had uh, been born into one of these quarters. And by the age of these kids, seven, eight, were playing football, they would have a certain view of the world, a certain view of themselves, a certain view of what they call God, a certain view of, of um, spirituality, a certain view of themselves. Had those same kids been born in the Christian quarter or the Jewish quarter, they would at the same age have downloaded a different program and thus would have had a different view of all the things that I've just listed. And what we need to do is realize that we are being, uh, and I, I say this to every belief, I say this to every religion, I say this to every color and creed. If you put your belief first, and the, the, um, the need for your belief to prevail first, then you are setting yourself up and your children up to be played off against other beliefs that put their beliefs first and think their beliefs must prevail first. And you are played against each other in a massive divide and rule. And if we look at what's happening in Europe, see, things are never black and white. They're always shades of gray.
Stay well, there, David Ike. Stay okay. there. I want to come back and we'll, we'll talk about this. Okay. Absolutely. Look, look, we're against the clash of civilizations. We don't want to kill the Muslims. We understand they're playing us off against each other. But regardless now, they're not bringing, you know, the friendly groups in. They're bringing radicals in for a clash. And I know you agree, David. So what's behind that? What's coming down the road next? I'm Alex Jones with David Ike. David Ike.com is his site. PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com are our sites. Spread the word. The GOP is scrambling for a response to Obama's gun control actions. Well, led by Speaker of the House, you know they'll drop the ball and do nothing. I mean, impeachment is the only answer. The president came out and said, Congress better get in line with me. I'm doing all this with executive action. National registries, uh, no fly list, not letting you have guns. I mean, the no fly list is pure tyranny. Doesn't keep us safe. By the way, getting into this whole Muslim issue, I'm the guy before 9-11 happened that came out and exposed it and said it's a plan to invade the Middle East and enslave. And they kick out all the moderate leaders that well, the women go to college and they're freer. And they, you know, Saudi Arabia is involved in the attack, so we attack Iraq. I mean, I know where David's going to go with this because he wants to bring all of humanity together. And I, so do I. That said, some of the greatest tyranny in the world is Saudi Arabian, Wahhabist versions of Sunni Islam. And... And I know David's traveled the world. He, I'm going to get his take on this, but I just want to be clear on this. We tried to stop this clash of civilizations so they would then flood us with these people. And the argument is, well, we bombed them. Now they're here. This isn't really the Iraqis and folks or the Christians. They're not letting them in. These are the people, the pilgrims that went to invade Syria that got their butts kicked. They're now coming here. And that's what the numbers show. So I'm asking David Icke, A, if he agrees with that, B, what he thinks the big master plan is with all this. Because David Icke has shown he can really predict uh, how this stuff is going to fall, how the dominoes are going to fall. His new book, available at davidike.com, uh, gets into finding uh, the true self. We'll talk about that more uh, in the next hour uh, with him as well. Uh, but, David, we got five minutes till break. Go ahead. Well, um, I want to get back to this fact that it's not black and white. Um, and we have in the Middle East, and I've, I've been there a number of times, some of the nicest, most peaceful, peaceful people you'll ever meet in your life. Some of the most friendly, some of the most courteous and decent people. You also have in the Middle East some of the most monumental, unspeakable evil involved in any country in the world. And I'm talking not just about Saudi Arabia, though that's one of them. The United Arab Emirates, Qatar, all these countries who are... Um, working in league with the United States and, and, and Europe to bring about catastrophe in the Middle East. And I, I was writing many years ago now about the plan to um, divide the Sunnis against the Shia. You and wrote 15 years ago about the plan to start a civil war. Yeah, and this is, this is what's, the, what's happening. And, and you, once you realize um, the game, apparent contradictions make absolute sense. Because what you would think is the people like Cameron and Obama and all these other people who are condemning uh, dictatorships, um, though they run them virtually, virtually um, and, 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 and violence, who uh, say we must bomb Syria and Libya and Iraq to get rid of tyrants, are in bed with tyrants in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, and, and people go... I don't understand. That's hypocrisy. But it, it is hypocrisy if you've got a mind of your own and you're coming from a, a, a position of um, wanting a, a better world. But if you're coming from understanding the game, it's they are in bed with whoever is supporting the agenda that we're talking about. And so they will want to bomb Assad because they want rid of him. They, want, they wanted rid of Gaddafi and, and uh, et cetera. And they, they, they actually, far from bombing, they are selling arms to Saudi Arabia, this truly evil place. I spent eight weeks there back in the 70s in, 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 um, uh, in a, a thing to do with football. And, and I only lasted eight weeks because I thought this place is so appalling. The way the people are treated is so appalling. Um, the, the, the royal family here, they we're not royal at all. They're fake royals. They just made it up. Oh, well, I mean, they were actually caravan bandits, so they were actually yeah, exactly. sex slavers. I mean, they were sex slavers. So stay there, stay there. Uh, we're going to come right back in 70 seconds looking at the big picture here. And, and by the way, they just announced they've got Stinger missiles. Oh, but no mention of who gave it to them.
That's in Thank mainstream news. Listening. We told you that was coming next. Stay with us. Good night with us. Another 20 minutes, and I'm going to cover news for 40 minutes. And then uh, David Knight is hosting the fourth hour today. I'm going to get back into the unprecedented attack on the Bill of Rights, the press, free speech, the Second Amendment. I feel bad when I talk about it because I'm not making a big enough deal out of it. We're just kind of calmly reporting on it. It's crazy. Uh, but David Ike's well, this is a five-minute segment, long segment coming up after that. He wanted to get into the fact that um, in many of these radical Muslim countries, if women are unattended, they're fair game to be raped. If the woman then complains, she's executed in Saudi Arabia. So you're basically allowed to rape women in Saudi Arabia. And a lot of these folks are running around Germany, and the left thinks it's cute. Uh, they're actually, the mayors are saying, don't wear short skirts, you know, it's your fault. Uh, the, but I mean, can you imagine if a German did this and the media even spins it and says German men are doing it. But you were getting into the uh, waves of folks being brought into Europe and we'll show some of the footage of the waves, uh, millions of people, uh, David Icke. Yeah, I mean, the question is, why is it happening? I mean, if you research this uh, conspiracy uh, for not very long, you realize that it is like um, a room of dominoes in a line, and you push one domino down, and that creates the next domino to fall. So we've had this situation in the Middle East where we've had all this uh, uh, bombing and destruction and chaos and, and catastrophe externally created by uh, the United States, NATO, Britain. And this has forced um, large numbers of people to leave. Um, and this um, wave into Europe um, has uh, of genuine people who deserve our help because of, of the situation that the West has put them in has been joined by vast numbers of other people who are not refugees but are seeking to get into Europe. And it's being allowed to happen for this reason. And it's been long planned for this reason. They want a world government, a world central bank, world army, um, and uh, world currency, etc. And under the world government, they want these super states. They want the European Union, of course, the American Union, the Pacific Union, all these, these super states under the world government. And these super states are designed not to be countries any longer, but to be broken up into regions, subordinate regions that are easy to control. You've talked about this in relation to the United States uh, and North America, and it, it's planned for the, the world. Now, the biggest resistance to the breakup and ending of sovereignty is a sense of national identity, a sense of distinct culture. And what is happening, and has been happening for a long time, I mean, that, that's just before I mention this, um, it came out a few years ago that during the Blair administration, came out in, 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 in uh, uh, documents and an, an insider speaking out, that they had set out to allow unfettered immigration into Britain, not to help the immigrants. They were pawns in the game, though they didn't realize it, but to, quote, change the face of humans, of uh, British society to a point where it would never go back to what it was before. Well, that's Peter and Sutherland. He even wrote in the BBC that Europeans are bad and this is to end Europeans being homogenous for balkanization purposes. This is all connected. Now, look at Europe, um, Alex, and you'll look at a country that has um, an enormously strong sense of its culture, sense of itself, sense of its uniqueness, sense of its history, and what you're looking at is Germany. And the resistance to the end of Germany, which they want down the line, and the end of the German culture would be absolutely massive if they knew that was going on. And the idea is, not just in Germany, but that's why Germany has been really picked out in this, what's happening. Stay there. This is Keith Sir. You're absolutely on target. Amazing info, davidike.com. The new book, you can find it there. This is it. Germany runs, basically, and funds all of the EU now. The EU was always designed in their own words to implode Europe once it got control and then fold it into a larger world government. By the way, we did a historic big interview with Louis Farrakhan two days ago. We'll give you details at the bottom of the hour. Detailing when that's going to be released, it will be a big newsmaker. Um, Farrakhan said, quote, he's changed in the interview, too. It's, it's, it's big. 
Uh, but a lot of people are really assessing, reassessing uh, things happening in the world because everybody can feel that huge change is upon us, some of it good, some of it bad. But if good people don't get involved, evil will triumph in this time of change. David Icke was getting into the fact, really deep stuff that, that's so on target from my research about why they're flooding Europe. Destroy the sovereignty of the countries. They're even telling them the soccer teams can't be named after countries anymore They because nationalism itself is bad. Then you bring in groups to break up the country, make it all about ethnic stuff, the opposite of multiculturalism, and then annex the Middle East in the name of controlling the migrant floods and invade more countries. Now, David Icke just went over all that. What comes next after that, David Icke? Well, I tell you, the, the other point I want to make is that um, people have been um, taken aback, not least Germans, at what Chancellor Merkel was doing. When this, um, uh, this great the flood of migrants um, began, um, she opened the doors to Germany uh, without any question, without any policy, without anything. And, and people in Germany were, were like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, what she's doing is this. Chancellor Merkel is a 100% owned and willingly owned asset of this hidden hand. And the reason that she's done what she's done um, is because the agenda demanded it. And because of that, she has... Um, acted and reacted, or hasn't, to uh, what has happened in the way that she has. And the other point, Alex, is um, again and again, when you, when you study how the hidden hand works, it plays one group of victims or one group of stooges, whatever you want to call them, um, against another to create the divide and rule. And they, see, again, we're back to the dominoes. If this domino goes down, this domino is going to go down, and that means this will happen. If you do A, B will, will and happen. And they never want you to think like that, but in their own books, right. they admit they're rigging 20, 30, 50, 100-year plans. So break yeah. down the rest of the plan where this goes from here. Well, exactly. And, and, and so the other point uh, of, of the migration is they know that um, certain things are going to happen. Because if you get a large number of people into any other, from one culture into another, then you're going to have some very nice people and you're going to have some very unnice people. That's what happens. And, and, and as things happen, and we're seeing some of them now, um, that the hidden hand knew would happen, you're obviously going to get an angry reaction from the population, uh, the, the German population, and you're going to create uh, conflict you're going to create resentment and you're going to create um, divide and rule conflict in Europe um, between those uh, who, who are uh, coming in and those that are already there. And um, uh, some of the, the, the decent people in both groups are going to be caught up in the crossfire. And, and so the more chaos you can have, order, ab chao, order out of chaos, and the more you can break down a sense of um, culture, a sense of unique culture, that together justifies a number of things. It justifies um, a, a police state to, um, to stop the, the, the conflict. That's my next stop, point. Stop Let me interject chaos. this, David, I, because I want you to continue. But this is so important. It's where I was going next. There's a, they don't want us to ever think about connecting dots or dominoes because if we ever have common sense, it's, it's over. They bring in the radical Muslims, they let them attack, and then they say, we're going to take your free speech away across Europe because this happened and, and arrest nationalists and arrest Le Pen in a response to them bringing them in and the same European governments backed destabilizing the Middle East and are involved. So at every level, they're doing it. And then now they bring even more groups. And as we said, when they gave them thousands of Stinger missiles a few years ago, they have articles now in the London Independent going, oh, now they have Stinger missiles from the West. But it's but then it talks about how they're fixing some of the old ones and might make them oh, work. I love that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. As that the today. cover story for them now shooting down the airliners. I mean, they're literally running it all. Our governments are, and they never get in trouble because none of the media will point out how ridiculous it is. David, I'm sorry. I'm ranting. It's a, it, it's a script. And, you know, 
There are some journalists who are manipulating in full knowledge of what they're doing, but they're the minority. We're back to the program again. If you don't see how the dots connect, you don't see how the dominoes fall onto the next David. domino. You can't see that it is pre-planned and has been uh, uh, pl planned to play out like this for a very, very long time. Then, and you're a journalist, all you can see is dots. You can't see pictures. Let me expand I'm on that. Let me. I've got to interrupt because it's so key. You're absolutely right. I got up this morning, saw the headline and instantly knew that it was a cover story for the thousands of missiles and that it would talk about them repairing the ones the West gave them. So they make the story about repairing them and make it look like they developed Stinger missiles. But then you read the third paragraph, it admits they've given them the Stinger missiles. I mean, it, but, but I didn't even need to read it. I'm so, you, just like you, I'm so used to their lies. I see the headline and I know what the spin's going to be. That's not being a conspiracy theorist. It's knowing how they operate. Go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well, of course, the, 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 the biggest problem is the, uh, the coincidence theorist. That's the worst one. <laughs> it's all a coincidence. I mean, it's, it's a head shaker. But, um, we're back to the to the lie and the truth. So um, you've got the uh, the the lie narrative for what's happening, and you've got to suppress the truth narrative. And this is why the man child, who is Mark Zuckerberg, and this outrageously uh, uh, censorship laden organization, Facebook, was caught on a live mic in the UN with who? Merkel. Chancellor Merkel, mm -hmm. um, talking about suppressing. Um, posts that are saying what's happening in Germany because it doesn't fit the narrative. This is the whole point. So if you're Google or your uh, your Facebook or any of these organizations who, who are all um, strands in the web, ultimately, I mean, if, if Mark Zuckerberg is is the one running uh, Facebook, ultimately, then I'm, I live in a bloody igloo. Um, and so um, you're seeing this suppression of anything that i mean i'm a, many things uh, uh censored by uh facebook including a, a, a posting a, a, of a story about um sandy hook uh and it's because if you're challenging the official narrative you're challenging the lie on which the transformation of society is being justified this is what, what what's happening and and people should realize this if 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 it's in the mainstream um, it's almost certainly um, a lie, even though uh, the journalists themselves might not know because they're so ignorant of what's going on. And, and, and if, you're being, if things are being censored by Facebook, it's not out, out of, I mean, when you see some of the things that happen on social media and that are posted, the idea that it's, it's to protect the sensibilities of No, Facebook. no, it's key stuff. It's like like when I interviewed different. Navy SEAL families, uh, like within weeks of Benghazi and, and other things, when I interview key people breaking stuff, it just gets censored and blocked. They're, they're definitely blocking key info that exposes their agenda, as you just said, David. And, it's, and, 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 and that just shows you where the power is. They are terrified of the truth. And so what we need to do is keep banging it out there. That's why I, I'm, I'm going on this um, uh, world speaking tour um, starting later this year, and it's open-ended. I am going to give every fiber of my being and, and, and do everything possible in the next, well, beyond, but certainly in the next three years, because this, this is the eye of the storm. This is the high eye of the hurricane. These are the three years where we can start to make fundamental impacts upon this uh, agenda so that the house of cards that it is mm -hmm. um, will fall, because... It's a house of cards because, A, it's based on lies, and, and B, it's based on a programmed population. Once the people um, uh, start to break out of what I call phantom self and start to see beyond it, start to realize it's a program and they've been programmed and their perception of everything has actually been downloaded so that they'll see the world the way that the, the, the uh, agenda demands, once they start to connect the dots and see that actually it's not all random, it's all connected, then the house of cards starts to fall because although it seems so powerful and all powerful, it ain't because it's I based agree. on being secret and it's based on the public being asleep. We put those two things right and the house of cards will fall.
David, we've got a few minutes left here. I'm going to skip this network break because this is so important today uh, to go over all this information. Undoubtedly, the point of emergence when the whole program starts coming out in the open has really begun in the last year. It's accelerating exponentially. I look at the acceleration. It's going to be crazy within 10, 12, 14 months, obviously. But Newtonian physics is accurate in this plane of existence that forever action, there's an opposite, you know, and, and equal a, a reaction, basically, and or equal and opposite reaction. And so I would have never thought, you talked about decompartmentalizing police officers, military, you know, how they're a perfect example of compartmentalization, protecting their own enslavers. But particularly, as you said, people on the inside going public, in media, in government, in the military, in the police, because they really see how evil it is. And because you and I and countless others have helped decompartmentalize them, that's really going to give the system a problem. But then I read white papers that are public, and the globalists admit, oh, we're just going to automation and technocracy. They believe that's their holy grail, where everything's going to be robots, everything's going to be automated, everything's going to be smart meters, self-driving cars, uh, you know, self-controlled you know, guns, where you don't have a choice and that's going to be their answer is this total robotic world that, quote, yep. makes it all convenient, but really takes all human power away. And that's the attacks on farms and ranches and Amish and outdoor farmers markets. I'm really getting to the point of it's true, but we can't just be hippies. We've got to have people that are on the land. We've got to fight in the cities politically, but we've got to work and at least support people that are on the land and, and and vote with our money to never support big globalist operations and literally keep our children with other like-minded people uh, and understand we are in an occupied planet. I mean, it's like childhood's in. I'm not saying it's aliens. I mean, that, you're saying it's interdimensional, whatever. It probably, I mean, it's just so, so obvious. It's out to destroy us. It's anti-human. Archetype, whatever, it's evil aliens want to get us. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. The point is, is that it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. They want to abort planet Earth. They want to play God. They want everything ugly. They want to mutate every species. They might as well be, you know, whatever from the ninth dimension because they're that anti-human. The elites say they're a new species. They say they're splitting off from us. They say, I don't believe in God, but I'm about to become God, you know, if you're uh, Ray Kurzweil. This is their big conferences. I know rich billionaires, as I'm sure you do. I know powerful Hollywood people, and they've come to me. In fact, I want to look at the camera and tell the viewers this and go back to David Icke. I'm talking to billionaires, Hollywood stars. You've heard a lot of them here on air, folks. I don't make this stuff up, but I tell you the... Putin listens to the show, you know, watches, and we're going to get an interview. I tell you, Matt Drudge, listener, boom, he shows up. I mean, we don't, you know, Louis Farrakhan, huge listener. You're like, well, Louis Farrakhan, yeah, he's changing. I'm wait to see the interview. The point is, is that I talk to a lot of people, though, and they go, listen, I knew you 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and I thought some of what you're saying was true and liked you and thought you were funny. But listen, I've had elites come to me and say, if you want life extension or you want to be part of the breakaway civilization, you go along with the system and you shut up and they get scared. They go, it's all real. And the head of a major media empire or the head of a major bank will go, you're damn right. It's real. We're bringing in world government. We're going to reduce population. You better join the right team and you stay away from that Alex Jones. I mean, they kind of take the mask off and these people are scared. So, so David, Icke, they've gotten to the point now in Hollywood, especially because you see Kurt Russell going public and all these other people. They are going to folks and literally basically threatening their families, but then saying, or come get on the spaceship. And I'm not saying they don't say spaceship, but it's like the high tech reservation. We've got the high tech. We're going to be gods. You know, we're going to, I mean, you, you see it in the headlines, the elite are obsessed with living forever, world government. It's all out in the open now. And they're going to the, to the big culture icons that could really change things. And they're telling them, and some of these icons say, I'm not going to join you. And they go, fine. But you keep your mouth shut or we'll kill you like we killed your daddy. And I, I'm going to leave it at that point with that famous group. But, uh, I mean, this that's how hardcore this has gotten, David. Go ahead. we got six minutes till break, and we'll let you go. Thank you for the time, sir. Right. Well, um, crikey, I could talk for hours now. Um, what, what we're looking at is uh, what I've called for years now the Hunger Games Society, where you've got a tiny elite of less than 1% that um, control everything or politics, or government, or, or money, etc., uh, world army. And you have a, uh, a mass population that survive. Um, 
in servitude and, I, and, and, and in deprivation and in slavery. Um, and I'm talking about people who this minute might call themselves well off and it doesn't affect me. And in between those two is the strata of the police state, which is there to mercilessly, this is why they're recruiting more and more psychopaths, um, to mercil mercilessly impose the will of the less than 1% upon the mass of um, human slaves. Um, and a key part of this is the assimilation. And you've um, brought up uh, the, the topic, transhumanism. Transhumanism, if you, if you listen to people like Kurzweil, you, you, you are told that transhumanism, um, putting technology inside the body, what they're calling implantables, will make us superhuman. No, it won't. It will make us super robots. It will make us super subhuman. Um, and so what is happening, and I go into this in The Phantom Self in some detail, and the chapter I write about this, I think is the most important chapter I've ever written in any book. Um, we're seeing what I call the totalitarian tiptoe of assimilating human minds into technology. It's uh, one major, major stepping stone to this is what is now a global addiction to smartphone technology, where we're losing, we're losing the, the young generation. To they admit it's rewiring the brain, brain damaging. Yeah, well, exactly. I go into this in the book, and if, 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 this is absolutely what is happening. Uh, it's rewiring the brain. It's dumbing down the brain. And there's perfect peer pressure to have social friends. They've got to be on it. So the human element lures you in to the dehumanization. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 it's an addiction. If you are um, an alcoholic, what's, what, who controls you? The alcohol. If you're a drug addict, what's, what, who's the controller? The drug. If you are an addict of technology, who controls you? The technology. That's right. This is, this is bringing the humans in and technology together. And they're caught, they went from smartphones and they've now gone to what they call wearables. These are the Bluetooth in the ear. These are the Google Glass. Um, and these are the, uh, the Apple Watches. And the next stage, and, and they're pushing this along faster and faster because they, they have to get this done before enough people awaken to And by the way, that. sir, as you, you said it before, they admitted it, they admit it's to take over our consciousness. It's, it's basically a holocaust. It's basically genocide. They say humans are crap. This new merger will be God. They're announcing they're going to end our world, and we're just sitting here with our thumbs in our you-know-whats. Well, we're, we're probably on the smartphone. Well, I'm not, but a lot of people are on the smartphone while it's all happening. Um, this guy, Ray Kurzweil, uh, this Google executive who, who is the, uh, uh, the, the spokesman for Frankenstein, um, he, is, uh, he has said that not too far into what we call the future, um, that most human thinking will be done from the cloud. And what he's referring to, although he won't tell you, of course, for obvious reasons, is something I've been writing about in the books for years. That is childhood's that end. That is the MI6 uh, you know, writer, he admitted that was an allegory for the real plan to put us into a collective computer mind where yeah, we all I die and join the Evermind. I can't believe what a cult of freaks these are, David. But, but that's um, what, we're, what we're looking at is what I've been writing about for years, what I call the technological sub-reality. That's what he's calling the cloud. It's, it's, it's a, um, a, a Wi-Fi, if you like, a massive Wi-Fi cloud, a massive Wi-Fi technological sub-reality in the region of the planet that um, uh, humans uh, live in, which will It's a new be dimension. It's an admitted new dimension where we can go and live in a false reality that also encroaches on the third dimension and gobbles up all of our data to cheat us and screw us and control us. It's literally a cloud of demonic locusts. <laughs> it will be doing the thinking. And the, the chapter I write in Phantom Self is called trans phantomism and i call it that because i've talked about phantom self and 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 i am my name i'm i'm my life story i'm my color i'm my race i'm my religion no your infinite awareness having that experience and it's taken even that level of the program what i call phantom self it's take it's designed to take it into a whole new level yes. of thought and perception control and so we need to get our asses in gear in 2016, uh, uh, rather, 17 and 18, 
and, and, and start to realize that this has to be the focus of our lives because our lives won't exist as they do now. David, David, this is incredible. Stay right there. Happen. You've got me so excited. Do three more minutes on the other side to finish up on how you say we get out of this because what you're laying out is admitted scientific fact that they're taking away our senses that are meant to experience the world by our spirit, by our soul, by the energy. They're removing us into those where the soul's actually all by itself now being artificially programmed from without. This is obviously enslaving us, physically hurting us, and is basically demonic possession through the computer. And then they admit that's their plan. My God, it's incredible. It's an invasion out of another dimension. I, I, I think of the cheesy kids movie, Pacific Rim where aliens invade, not from outer space, but from a dimensional rift in the Pacific Ocean. Now, I'm not saying that's real for the New York Times. I'm not getting into space aliens here. What I'm saying is the allegory is still true, whether you believe it or not, that what we've created with the internet and Wi-Fi and these broadcasts is creating a new universe, a new world that is absorbing this world and, and marking everything and then putting it into its artificial system so it can artificially map it, track it, control it, predict the future. And I was told by NSA whistleblowers in person, uh, you know, literally in parking garages and stuff, people would come to me at events or where I worked. I had no idea how dangerous it was at the time. And of course, you've seen a lot of NSA folks on here since, former director of technicals and many others. I mean, and they would tell me, this is like 18 years ago, Alex, there's microphones in the Scientific Atlantic things and cameras. And I'd tear it open on air and it'd be there and I'd get death threats. I mean, on, on Access TV, I'd tear it open and everyone was seeing the camera and the microphone, you know, 18 years ago. Uh, and then they would say, it's to predict the future, Alex. So then decisions can be given to key leaders to position themselves to take over markets. But also once we can predict the future, we can steer the future. They're controlling the future. And, and, and these, I mean, and then these guys would like, you know, get in their $100,000 Mercedes in the parking garage scared, you know, uh, and drive off. I mean, you know, I mean, this was, these were guys that were in the system who were freaked out. And so, folks, we're talking godlike stuff. So even if aliens aren't real, the elite believes they are, and they believe all this power, they're gods, basically. You know, what are the gods of Olympus? They're like aliens. So the allegories there, where they're playing God, they're trying to force us into this artificial system, and they can you know, make the blind see, make the deaf hear. There's all these things that sound great. My dad's brother was in a motorcycle accident, uh, you know, had epilepsy forever, has a brain chip, not just the stimulant system, and, and he's a lot better now. You know, the visitors have come. Uh, you know, what, it's the global elite, the, uh, the sciences, they're giving us all these goodies. But there's Trojan horses in all of it, and our cancer rates way up. Our IQs are dropping. Uh, the death rates are expanding. People are unhappy. But no one debates why is breast cancer up 3,000% in the West. No one debates why is pediatric cancer is up more than 10,000%. No one debates why is diabetes type 1 up, type 2. No one, it's just, oh, everything just sails forward. David Icke, three or four minutes, I know you got to go. Thank you so much, sir, but th well, what you're getting to is so important. Now there's no doubt, whoever they are, they're trying to submerge us as a species and kill us. This is a slow extermination program, sucking us in, drugging us, poisoning us like a giant spider would do before it eats us. David Icke. Well, it's, it's an assimilation, um, and uh, it's not just happening... Um, in the world that we see. Um, I explain in Phantom Self um, in some detail how we're being assimilated through nanotechnology. Um, people should, um, should look on the internet and get up to date with something they're calling smart dust or neural dust. See, in our chats over the years, Alex, um, I've talked about the body being a biological computer. Um, because it's a biological computer, it can um, interact with other forms of technology. And um, what is happening when you see that bionic eye story, et cetera, and, and, and there are, you know, uh, on the face of it, they're good things. And for the per people that um, uh, benefit from one or two of these things, it, 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 it is a good thing. But that's not what the, 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 the main thing is all about. It's about assimilating our perception and our consciousness and taking over our thinking completely. And, and so what they're doing is creating, and this is the word, 
to watch for, synthetic. They're creating a synthetic everything. Um, we are being systematically made more and more synthetic by breathing in nanotechnology that's coming out of chemtrails, for instance. Um, and nanotechnology um, is not only uh, affecting humans, it's affecting the, the environment. Um, they're now developing synthetic cells. They're now developing synthetic blood. De and it, this is the, the thing, synthetic. It's creating a, a new human which is not like humans were before. They're turning uh, us and, and into replicants. They see us as yeah. their property. And then when we break free and become real humans again, because we were always real, they basically send out their cultural Blade Runners to kill us. They're throwing it in our face. Yeah, and, and so, you know, if people want to stop this, then they first have to reject um, completely transhumanism. I mean, it's a simple question for people with half a brain. Why would a elite that has spent so much time controlling humans and um, suppressing humans and limiting humans want to make us superhuman? I mean, hello, what, what they want to do is to make us beyond human, to become synthetic um, computer terminals on their technologically generated web. And, 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 you know, I've talked to you before about the, the, the plan is, and I think it's already there personally, to make the Internet conscious. And what are they talking about, Alex? I mean, we, we must have another... Google admits uh, 16 years ago, 17 years ago when they were founded, that this was declassified by the company themselves last year to Wired, that they have been trying to build a super brain that is AI from the start to then control humans by manipulating their data and merge with us. It is a takeover organ. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, th this is the point. This is where I was going. And I go into this in Phantom Self in, in some detail, like I say. We keep being told, Alex, all the time, you've just mentioned it, AI, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence this, artificial intelligence that, artificial intelligence will take over this, uh, we'll have smart cities run by artificial intelligence, Party. we'll have cars run by artificial intelligence. But this is the question, which I answer in the book, what is that artificial intelligence? What is it? What controls it? I, I would suggest very strongly, and I, I produce evidence in the book, that this artificial intelligence is this non-human force that's been manipulating humanity for a very long time. Yeah, they're building it's, the grid to take over. Well, if building, I was advanced aliens, Alex, this is what Alex, I would do. Alex, Alex, they're building the vehicle. They're building the technological vehicles for this artificial intelligence, i.e. not human intelligence, to take over the whole shebang including the human mind. And they That's have us pay for it, on. and they have us build it, and then the military step back, turn off all their systems, spike uh, human training for combat so humans can't even resist. Everything goes robots, and then it seizes control. And, and whether it's aliens from deep space or another galaxy or another dimension or an artificially uh, AI supercomputer, it doesn't matter because the elite are psychos and they run the machine regardless. Anyway, whatever it is, you can smell it's not of this world. I, I would say the artificial intelligence I'm talking about runs the elite. Um, uh, and um, Through their they're, genetic codes. Yeah, they're just, they're just pawns in the game as well. They just don't think that. They, they don't think they are. They think they're, they're the about. original biological androids. Yeah, they're, they're just they're just vehicles. There are other ve they're, they're also vehicles for this um, for this artificial intelligence I, I'm uh, I, I'm talking about. So this is what we're we're looking at, and this is why I say, Alex, that 16, 17, 18 are so absolutely vital, is because they are now going to try to go into overdrive and steroid states to uh, bring in this um, um, assimilation through the transhumanism as fast as possible. Um, I mean, do, do you know, so, I mean, this is, this is just talking about chips, but there's a story on my website today uh, that I came across. Uh, we have a, uh, some sausages in this country called Richmond Sausages, right? Richmond Sausages are now giving away um, chips, tracking chips with their sausages, because they think it's a good play on words, partly, to, to put for children to put on their toys, and it's the most blatant conditioning and um, preparation 
for um, young people and kids today to find chipping humans to be perfectly, um, uh, well, this is the way things are, perfectly natural. It's absolutely extraordinary. And even if it's unnatural up front, they just do it in an artificial environment, as you said last hour, until they just accept it because it's targeting them, not us. Here's an example. Uh, eight years ago, I was sent a textbook. I showed it many times on air. It's somewhere here around the office. And it's one of the major textbooks used by sixth graders in science across the United States. Millions and millions of children use it every year. And it said, the Department of Energy in 1992 launched a program with a Nobel Prize winner to save the Earth from ozone depletion uh, and to spray sunscreen over the Earth. And it's added to the jet turbines uh, with different uh, compounds to protect the Earth. So they know they've got kids there and they're telling them, we're chemtrailing you. Then they have shows on TV, you know, interviewing kooks who talk about fake chemtrails to make it look dumb. But to the kids in government approved textbook, they just admit it. You see the different downloads. We're in an earlier download. So we're kept in a paradigm. Here's an example. Uh, USA Today, I've noticed, will have for people that still read papers, watered down stuff. So I shot a video this weekend on it. One headline in the paper uh, um, Friday was... U.S. You know, television news faces its mortality in election coverage and admits they basically have no viewers and are dead. The very same author, very same writer. On the paper version, it was written differently, different headline about how, well, TV faces a lot of competition. So see, for the older folks still reading newspapers, it was everything's kind of okay. But for people online, hey, it's dead. And, and you can just see how the, this is really... Hive mind, man. They've they've really, and now the CIA is going to where the articles are all basically written by computers. I mean, I, I, wow! I tell you, this is incredible, David. I, how do we stop it? How do we break free from it? Because whatever's behind it, it is super sophisticated. But if you just wake up to it and start withdrawing consent and support from it and speaking out against it, we have tightness for seven and a half billion of us uh, to change this. Well, um, you know. What what you were just talking about um, uh, is worth mentioning this, and I, I, I kind of indicated earlier that uh, uh, our generations that have been here long enough to see what was before this uh, extreme of madness are so important. Because when you're born into the world, you tend to accept the world and what you find as, well, this is how it is. To you, it's normal. To someone like me, born in the 1950s, looking at what's happening now, uh, it ain't normal to me. It's it's a form of insanity. But for people born into this world, it's their normal. And what they're doing is they're conditioning kids to um, have the agenda, the cloud, the transhumanist control. And that is the hive mind. Uh, the hive mind is the cloud. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, it's their normal. And, and so what our generations need to do is to uh, point out at every opportunity that it ain't normal and why it's not normal. What we need to do to overcome this, I mean, let, let's, I mean, I've been saying for years, you can either find a solution to something or you can remove the cause of the problem. And clearly the cause of the problem can be identified by how and where this system wants to take us. It wants to take us from even the present program that where we self-identify with color, race, religion, name, history, and all that stuff, to the next stage, which is the transphantomist stage of, of control through um, hive mind technological cloud. In other words, to control us, they need to constantly limit to our perception and ability to think and perceive. To, to remove the cause of the problem, we have to remove that. And to do that, we need another self-identity to go beyond phantom self, never mind trans-phantom self, and, and, and see what we, and realize what we really are. We are awareness, a state of being aware. Forget bodies, forget form, forget it all. We forget are consciousness with a wicked force trying to literally strangle us and put a hood over our head and enslave us 
uh, absolutely shutting off the universe from us and free will. It's claustrophobic to feel the spirit of this enemy. They are hijacking our point of attention. You can be the ocean. You can, you can open your mind to awareness, insight, inspiration that is literally infinite. And when you do that, you look at this world and it is an open book. Or you can disconnect from the ocean, which is what all this is about, and become the droplet disconnected from the ocean. When you put the droplet back in the ocean, where does the droplet end and the ocean start? It's all one ocean, all one. And look at how they're trying place. to end families, make us all by ourselves. Yeah, but if you if you pull the droplet out of the ocean, you isolate it. And suddenly people um, in that state, and that's most people because of the programming, instead of getting their insight, their inspiration, their intuitive knowing, they're seeing through the, the lies from uh, uh, higher forms uh, or, 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 or levels of their own awareness, not some alien in a spaceship, their own awareness, they get so concentrated in the five senses that the only way that they can look to get a fix on who they are and the nature of the world is out into the world. And what comes back? The media, the education system, all these um, vehicles... The false reality to tell you that your lying eyes, your lying gut are wrong... You're absolutely yeah, exactly. right. Exactly. And, and the, 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 the point being that if we're going to get out of this, and we are, but it's a massive challenge, is we've got to reverse that, that uh, process of going into more and more uh, narrow bands of perception, awareness, and possibility to coming out to our true self. And that is to say that I'm not, who are you? Who are you? Um, um, I'm David Icke, born in Leicester in 1952. I was a footballer. Then I did this, then I did that. No, that's my experience. Who am I? Who are you? Who is everyone? Infinite awareness having an experience. But what the game is, and transphantomism, transhumanism is the big next stage of the game, almost the end game, is to so isolate um, our point of attention within this reality that we can access no other point of assessment. A total prison for the soul. David Icke, always for the, powerful. A prison for the mind. It's a prison for the mind. DavidIcke.com. David, thank you so much. Look forward to your world tour. Wild. I have done deep research, as many of you have and our guests have, and all I'm telling you is the global standardization system that is being set up is anti-human and is meant to reduce world population and destroy culture and is super bad. And the direction technology is going is to enslave and control us. I'm always on the leading cutting edge of it to reach people. But just because I'm jacking into the matrix, baby, doesn't mean I like it. And I'm not some anti-technology person. Man, if vaccines work, I want them. If bionic eyes work when I'm 75 or 80, I want them. If bionic hearts work, I want it. The problem is the new world order, folks, takes away your health and then gives you a replacement that takes your, takes your humanity. And, I mean, that's not just me sitting back saying that. I've looked at this hard, and, man, at the bottom of the hole, this rabbit hole, is something so scary. It makes my soul shudder. Not wanting to be close to it, not wanting to be around it. I mean, there, you know, there's all these little toys and candies and jewelry laying around that open into this hole. You stick your arm up in there, baby. The, 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 there's, there's bait outside that hole to get you to go in there. And everything's pumpkin pie till you get deeper down that hole. And this, this system doesn't hit you with happy gas at the end before it eats you. It's done all this so we can slowly tear your soul and heart and mind apart. And by the way, Ike talks about, you know, it wants to get our mind, not our soul. No, it wants our soul. Because if you can get, if they can get us sucked into the mind so much and then poison our soul with these systems... There is good and evil. We will then resonate with the darkness, and it's over. They got us. You know, a lot of the more modern folks, the New Agers and stuff, think that, oh, it's all good. You can transcend this. No, 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 no. 
There is evil at the highest levels of the spectrum of dimensions. I, I can just know it in my gut. And um, because there's free will in this universe. Now, we see the propaganda of North Korea. It's corny, it's comical, it's sickening, it's ridiculous. But look at our own propaganda people are buying into. You laugh at people crying when Kim Jong-un died. It's ridiculous, three days of crying. If they don't do that, they're sent to a forced labor camp. Because that's what the economy is based on. But here they are announcing the miniature H-bombs they supposedly created. And then just look at the false reality with some little fat dictator with weirdo crazy women in pink dresses announcing they can blow America up. It's ridiculous, but only because you are more conscious than people living under this level of brainwashing. But what you face is even more sophisticated. Here it is. But see, she's bad, they're bad, then our leaders are bad. It doesn't make like you choose America or choose these people. Because America has been hijacked by a bunch of criminals that are coming after your speech, your guns, your health care, your kids, your property, your religion, everything. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent. They want you to do what they say. Obama said Congress better get in line. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. If we want to defeat the globalist, we have to understand they're using medical tyranny against us. But to get us into that globalist controlled system, they want to make us unhealthy. The globalists spike our water with sodium fluoride and they admit it causes massive increases in bone cancer, brain damage and reduced IQs. The GMO crops have all been directly linked to reduce fertility, deformities, in mammals across the board. We are all under attack because when we're operating from a healthy position of good food, natural food, clean water, and the nutrients and trace elements we need, our minds will be on fire. The powerful, creative human destiny will be unleashed. Now, I want to tell you a very important story. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn from friends like Ted Anderson about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. He began to hear the guest on my show a year and a half ago. He began to do his own research, and he implemented and had dramatic results. And that's why I'm telling our listeners and viewers, and try just the essential fatty acids, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and the Pollen Burst Plus. And I believe you'll be blown away by the dramatic results that I've had and Aaron's had. I've been overweight in my life for far too long. Years ago, I lost a lot of weight, more than 50 pounds, but it came right back. I wasn't able to keep it off. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. They don't, but it became- But, but, but pharmacist Ben Fuchs explains that. That's what happens if you're overweight because you're no longer hungry because you're getting what you need. I'm doing the whole regimen, and I've lost seven pounds in a week and a half. I'd lost 42. I quit doing it because I've never been in the habit of doing this, gained a few pounds back, and now raced seven pounds in a week and a half. It is impossible for your body to optimize its structure and function without 90 essential nutrients. There are 90 essential nutrients that your body needs. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins. 12 amino acids and two essential fatty acids. The sad fact of the matter here, however, is that even if you uh, owned 100 acres of organic farmland and had the best organic food in the world and only ate your stuff, you would still be deficient in, nutri in nutrients because the nutrients that your body needs are not present in the food. They're not there. They are not all there.
So unless you are supplementing with effective, efficient, absorbable nutritional supplements appropriate for your body weight, it's only a matter of time until something breaks. Now, I have been doing this for 25 years. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician in primary practice. I have been doing naturopathic medicine for 25 years. But in the fields of science-based, clinically verified, licensed naturopathic medicine, Wallach is an unrivaled superstar. Since I've been following Dr. Wallach's therapeutics, he's using his research and his protocols for the last four and a half, five years, I don't even know what planet I'm on anymore because the things that I've seen people recover from blow my mind. You don't know Dr. Wallach like I know Dr. Wallach. You know Dr. Wallach from the longevity community. I know Dr. Wallach from the medical community. I've known Wallach for 25 years and as God is my witness. He is the most experienced naturopathic physician. Quite frankly, he's the most experienced physician on the planet and we are lucky to have him driving this bus. Now look, somebody's got to be number one, and there's a reason why Wallach's therapeutics are so unbelievably effective. There's a reason. It's not magic and pixie dust. It's this. This book Wallach wrote took 12 years, 25 million bucks. It's in the Smithsonian. It's a national treasure. Doc did 26,000 autopsies. 10 million blood chemistries. That's a lot of work. When you do this much, old-fashioned, boots on the ground, reality-based research, and then you follow it up with decades of clinical application, you're going to get a clue. And that's why Wallach Therapeutics is so unbelievably effective, and that's why the longevity family of nutritional supplements is so unbelievably effective. It's not even in the same classification of nutritional supplements as any other company. This is not USANA, folks. This is not Herbalife. This is, uh, this is science-based, clinically verified, new-fashioned medical nutrition bought to you by the superstar of holistic medicine in the world, Dr. Joel Wallach. No other company has his recipes, and because we have the recipes, we get unbelievable results. And here's what Wallach's research showed. The majority of chronic diseases are not genetic, they're not autoimmune, they're caused by nutrient deficiencies, and they're fixed with the proper nutrition. And listen, if you're struggling with a chronic health condition, asthma, arthritis, type 2 diabetes, fibromyalgia, heartburn, you don't have a bad gene, you have a bad doctor. Listen, you know a year and a half ago, I've been promoting this two years. I knew it was good products, but I barely promoted it because I, I hardly ever even plug my sponsors. I'm so busy. My main focus isn't making money, though I need to to fund the operation. But Ted Anderson's dad d d didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. And Ted allows me to tell this story. It's very sad. And, you know, great guy, whole nine yards. He got him on.